Hello and welcome to the Monday, September 11th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. People often ask why you would run a honeypot or use the data we have to offer at the Internet Storm Center that's derived from these honeypots. I usually state that the data is most useful to add color to your logs. The data we collect from honeypots can help better understand why, for example, a certain attack, a certain IP would show up in your logs. So it's really about augmenting the data that you already have uh, for your SOC, but it's also useful for the honeypot itself if you run the uh, honeypot. And one of our undergraduate interns, Chris uh, Wuchik, went at least in my book a bit, a bit unusual route to add uh, more context to his honeypot logs. Chris used a PowerShell script, uh, not Python, uh, to collect data from APIs like, for example, Alien Walls Threat Exchange to see how the data for his honeypot fits in uh, with all the other data sort of collected by uh, the Threat Exchange. He outlines the complete uh, process in his guest diary, including, of course, uh, some of the scripts that he then created. When I recorded a Friday's podcast, I mentioned that we had yet to hear from Citizen Lab about the Apple patch released on Thursday. Citizen Lab was noted in the Apple security announcement that they alerted Apple of this particular vulnerability. And again, this was already exploited. That's really what Citizen Lab found. The patch addressed two vulnerabilities that uh, are exploited in target attacks. An interesting twist was that one of the patches addressed a vulnerability in Apple's uh, wallet application. Citizen Lab released a blog post with details shortly after I finished uh, recording for uh, the Friday podcast. So we now have some more details uh, to talk about. The attack did not require any user interaction. Apple's relatively new lockdown mode does apparently prevent exploitation. But before you run and enable lockdown mode, realize that it may affect some significant uh, features. The exploit took advantage of a buffer overflow in image IO. That's uh, the exploit. That's the library that displays images. But to exploit the vulnerability, uh, the exploit took advantage of a validation issue in Apple's Passkit. Passkit is used uh, to create iOS wallet items like uh, boarding passes or concert tickets. Uh, this vulnerability has uh, gotten a lot of press but realize that the only known exploit is part of sort of a more high-end uh, commercial exploit kit that was used in targeted attacks. Still best to patch quickly. Haven't heard of any problems uh, with uh, these patches. More of a concern are, well, on the other hand, unpatched vulnerabilities that are exploited by ransomware gangs. Ransomware gangs tend to be a lot less discriminating when it comes to applying their skills. CVE 2023-2269 is a vulnerability in Cisco's ASA and FTD devices that is currently being exploited. So far, Cisco published an advisory with mitigations, and you definitely uh, should uh, read that and apply these mitigations. There is no patch really at this point. The flaw appears to be related to recent reports of brute force attacks against uh, these uh, devices. According to the advisory, the issue is caused by the device not properly separating uh, AAA, the authentication, authorization, and accounting features from other software features, which in the end results in attackers being able to brute force account credentials without sort of triggering any of the rate limits that would lock accounts. In order to be vulnerable, 
the device must have a clientless SSL VPN enabled. The attacker will gain access by brute forcing credentials via the HTTPS management console. Now, where things aren't then separated well is that these credentials will then work in order uh, to connect to the VPN and, uh, well, then, of course, to networks uh, that are protected by the VPN. See Cisco's bulletin for additional details and how to enable the workarounds. The bulletin also includes indicators of compromise to verify if you have been attacked via this weakness. And again, it is at its nature a brute force uh, attack. So if you have uh, strong passwords, you're less likely uh, going uh, to get affected by this. And last week, I mentioned an odd password that we have seen show up frequently in our honeypot logs. This was one of uh, Jesse's uh, diaries, I believe, uh, from last week. We now have a solution thanks to a comment at mastodon. The password 345GS5662. D34. Well, it matches when the user types my password on a Taiwanese uh, keyboard. So interesting that an issue like this uh, sort of uh, comes up and, well, I guess attackers figured out that uh, this is something that uh, people are using as password. Maybe it's even used as a default password. Some devices haven't really figured that out yet. But uh, the issue of sort of non-English passwords and brute forcing for them uh, just actually came up in class last week as well. So uh, thanks, uh, Robert uh, Daniel Picard, who on Mastodon uh, sort of uh, posted this as a possible solution. Well, that's it for today. Uh, Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.